So the next thing I want to talk about is the idea of resolution and image size and image quality. We talked about how to create documents and some settings that you might choose, but you don't really know what settings to choose until you know what they mean. And so resolution is defined as the pixels per square inch in an image. It is sometimes referred to as the PPI or the DPI. Um, if I look at the image here of these people jumping, um, it's a digital image, and if I look at it up close, you can see that it's a grid of squares. Those are dots. And so I would describe the image as being in PPI. It stands for pixels per inch. Um, and it's a better way to describe the resolution of images on screen when you're looking at them digitally because they are literally made up of pixels. And they're, it's more complex than I'm going to make it, but you can translate PPI, pixels per inch, to DPI, dots per inch, when you print because when we print, we print with printing dots called halftones. And so the image on the bottom here of the clouds, which is from another video that we've already watched, um, you can see as I zoom in, there's all these little circles. And so when I talk about the resolution of a printed image on paper, I would say that the resolution has a DPI, dots per inch. Um, sometimes these terms are used interchangeably. So if you open up different graphic arts programs and you go to look at the resolution, it could be described as PPI or DPI. And so what I would like is anytime an image has pixels or you're viewing at it on screen, we'll refer to the resolution as PPI, pixels per inch. But once it has been printed and it's on paper, we'll refer to it as the DPI, the dots per inch. There's also another term called LPI, lines per inch. And that, if, that, um, that has to do with the printing dots as well. So DPI and LPI are both printing resolution terms. LPI stands for lines per inch, and it's the frequency in which you can print halftone dots. Um, we're not really going to talk about LPI in this class um, too much, but if you take our 1135 printing fundamentals, you'll learn about LPI there. When we talk about resolution, generally we say there are two types of resolution. We have web resolution and print resolution. We are going to expand what that means in this class, but for now, let's, let's embrace this idea that we have web and print resolution. And once we can grasp those concepts, then we'll kind of dive down further into the website and further into the print side. And so web resolution is 72 PPI, meaning that every one inch of the image will contain 72 pixels across and 72 pixels tall. So there's 72 pixels per inch. This can be a little misleading, however, because digital outputs, aka web outputs, are determined by the resolution of the image and the resolution of the display device. It is more accurate to describe the resolution as being 72 PPI because we want to keep the file size small, but to refer to the size of the image in pixels instead of in inches. So for example, an image is 7 inches by 5 inches at 72 PPI. That's all great and fine and dandy but it doesn't really give me a visual of how big the picture is going to be displayed because if a monitor is set to a different resolution than 72, it may appear bigger or smaller than 7 inches by 5 inches. So this does not accurately describe how large the image will be displayed on a screen. It may be bigger or smaller. So a better way to describe it is an image is 504 pixels by 360 pixels at 72 ppi. And the reason I, I'm saying 504 is because I did 7 inches times 72, and it gave me 504. And then 5 inches times 72 pixels per inch is 360. Now that I know that the image is 504 pixels across and 360 pixels tall, I can visualize that on a computer screen. If my computer screen is 2,000 pixels across, I could say this image is going to be about one-fourth of the size of the screen. File size is very important when working with web resolution. Higher file sizes mean longer load times and more storage needs, and our goal is to have the smallest file size possible without losing image quality. Every time images are prepped for a web or di digital display output, the ultimate goal is to have just the exact number of pixels needed and not a single pixel more. Any extra pixels increase the file size without providing any extra quali quality benefits. And so if I look at my example images here at the bottom of the screen, the first image is in 72 resolution. It's 72 pixels per inch, and it looks like a green robot with red accents. And if I look at the resolution at 150 PPI or 300 PPI or even 900 PPI, I've significantly increased the quality, I'm doing air quotes here, of the image by increasing the file size. So I have lots of pixels in those images 
but if I look at them, they all look exactly the same. Anything above 72 is not going to look any better on a display device because the display device can't show me any better. And so what we want is to have the smallest file size and the least number of pixels possible without deteriorating the quality of the image. And so that's why we say 72 ppi is standard web resolution. So when you're formatting your images, you want to have a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. However, decreasing web resolution below 72 and the exact number of pixels needed for your intended output will have negative consequences on the image quality. And so if you go below 72, you may start to notice that the image quality will drop off. And so in our, our example here, 72 pixels per inch looks fine. 60 is getting a little blurry, but maybe if I really need to decrease the file size, I will go down to 60 pixels per inch. 45 is even worse, and when I get down to 30 pixels per inch, the image is blurry and kind of gross looking, and I wouldn't want to put that in my project because instead of looking at the image and saying, oh, that's a cool image of a robot, I would be staring at the poor quality of the image wondering why it's all blurry and pixelated.